coming up from the Northeast Live Studios in Guwahati. Northeast tonight with Wasbi Rusan. Welcome to Notice Tonight, the show that decodes the region. Last summer, the Chinese tried to occupy some of our land in the Ladakh sector but failed. Perhaps after realizing that its Ladakh foray was not going to yield results, Beijing must have decided to come up with pinpricks for India in different fronts. As part of this possible strategy, China built a village complete with 101 houses in a stretch of land belonging to India, which it had occupied in 1959. And this land is a part of the upper Subansiri district of Arunachal Pradesh. The development came in the public domain after satellite imageries from the American imaging company Planet Labs Incorporated came in the public domain, including the media. Imageries of the place along the banks of the Chari Tsu River had no such construction till August 2019. But satellite imageries of the same place taken in November 2020 shows the village some 4.5 kilometers inside Indian territory from the de facto border. Yes, India too is engaged in building roads and other infrastructure along the border with China but these are within our own territory. True, the place where the village has been built was the scene of an armed conflict in 1959 and has been allegedly under Chinese occupation. But should Beijing scale up construction in a stretch which is not actually theirs? Is this China's time-tested salami slicing tactics yet again? this time directed at Arunachal Pradesh, the Indian frontier state it has always been eyeing? This is the million dollar question. What should be India's response? After all, people's representatives from Arunachal Pradesh, including current BJP MP Tapir Gao and former Congress MP Ninong Ering have been repeatedly bringing such matters to the attention of the central government. Already, the Congress and the BJP are engaged in a war of words over the issue with some BJP leaders, including Mr. Tapir Gao and Union Mr. Kiran Riziju, saying the stretch is under Chinese occupation since the days of the Congress rule in the country. The big question now is, what are we going to do? How do we deal with this? To discuss the issue, I am joined by an eminent panel tonight. From New Delhi, I am joined by Dr. Srikant Kondapalli, Professor of Chinese Studies at the Jawaharlal Nehru University and a highly respected China expert. Also from New Delhi, I am joined by Mr. Jayadeva Ranade, former additional secretary in the cabinet secretariat and one of India's best known commentators on India-China affairs. From Pasighat, I am joined by Arunachal BJP MP Mr. Tapir Gao. In Itanagar, I have NPP leader Mr. Jarpum Gambling and also joining me from Pasighat is all Arunachal Pradesh Students Union General Secretary Tabom Dai. Tabom Dai is also with me from Pasighat. This is an esteemed panel that I have tonight. Gentlemen, welcome to notice tonight. Let me go straight to you, Mr. Jayadev Ranade. Uh, Mr. Ranade, in 2019, Itself, you had written a lengthy article, you had did a lengthy paper where you predicted that this is going to happen. How do you see the construction of a complete village allegedly well inside Indian territory by the Chinese in a stretch of land that it has occupied in 1959 itself? What does this infrastructure push really indicate? Do you think they are trying to make up for their inability to achieve much of a success in the Ladakh sector? Well, uh, firstly, thank you for inviting me and uh, it's a pleasure to be on uh, Northeast Live again. Uh, with regard to your specific question, uh, Vasibir, let me say that by constructing this village, 
at this location, at this specific location, which has been under their occupation since 1959, what they're doing is that they're trying to legitimize and consolidate their occupation of this territory. This is a precursor to uh, strengthening their claim over the whole of Arunachal Pradesh, which they have been trying to do. But if we go back a little bit, this particular project, what they call the Poverty Alleviation Project, uh, was started at the end of 2017, uh, when two girls, two sisters from Yumei village uh, in Lingchir, that is opposite Arunachal Pradesh, they had written a letter to uh, uh, Xi Jinping, uh, and he had replied, saying that we will improve your lot and we'll improve your living conditions. Since then, China has undertaken a massive program, and there are 684 border defense villages, so-called model border defense villages, that are being built right across the uh, Indo-Tibet uh, uh, border. And here, uh, there are two, three uh, uh, agenda points that they have. The first is, of course, to uh, build a series, a network, or a chain of uh, almost watchtowers, you can say, people who are keeping an eye on the border and looking at India to report movements, etc. The second is to prevent Tibetans from crossing over the border, either from our side there or from their side here. The third is to uh, break the cohesiveness of the Tibetans by moving people from northern Tibet to the border area right. and moving people out from here. And fourth, of course, they're increasing the size. So, for example, where there was one household of two people or three people, they are now adding to the numbers and building 30 to 40 households in one place. Of course, the populations are different. They're getting people from different villages, different mix of religions also. So uh, the hold of the Chinese Communist Party strengthens. So this okay. is a major program okay. uh, to start occupying territory, nibbling away territory on a more permanent basis, okay. and also repopulating right. these areas. Right. You will remember, Vasibir, a, a couple of programs ago, uh, uh, you had also discussed the uh, problems confronting us uh, in certain areas, arising mainly from the thinning out of our village populations in the border areas. So that is a problem that we have to confront. There oh, are solutions. Okay. I'm sure we'll yeah. discuss that we, later. We will, we'll discuss that. I think it's a quite a comprehensive uh, statement op as a by way of an opening remark from Mr. Jayadev Ranade, who is basically saying that this is a calculated strategy on the part of China to nibble territory and to consolidate its claim on Indian territories, including that of Arunachal Pradesh, uh, uh, which, of course, there is no doubt in any one of us, my, any one of our minds, that this is an integral part of India. Uh, now, before going to Dr. Srikant Kondapalli, let me show a video uh, which is in circulation in China uh, by a Chinese national and they are almost using it as a propaganda to, and they are saying that it is a poverty relief project, relocation of farmers and herdsmen have started last month. That is a representation video which is in circulation in China. We are not authenticating the veracity of this particular video but this uh, gives a representation of this particular village that we are discussing. Uh, rows of houses are seen well laid out roads uh, with trees and of course a scenic surrounding considering of course there is no surprise that it's a scenic surrounding uh, it's located close to the border or even within uh, Indian territory which is under Chinese occupation since 1959. So this is a video that a Chinese national has tweeted uh, 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 you know uh, yesterday this is a Chinese national has tweeted yesterday about this particular village that we are discussing today. It's on the banks of the Chari Chu River. And uh, if uh, uh, Mr. Tapir Gao is there, he said it could be well inside Indian territory. At least uh, report, some reports say, according to the Planet Labs, it is 
4.5 kilometers within Indian territory. We are yet to hear from the government as to whether it is actually correct or not. Uh, let me go to you, Dr. Uh, Srikant uh, Kondapalli. Uh, what do you make of this, Dr. Kondapalli? Uh, you know, Mr. Jayadev Ranada says it's a calculated strategy on the part of the Chinese to nibble territory. Somebody else said it was a part of the Chinese attempts at salami slicing uh, territory and so on and so forth. But how do you look at it, Dr. Srikant Kondapalli? I think there is a pattern in the Chinese approach. Uh, they first send the yaks and then gradually send people to construct a few uh, telltale marks on the ground, which they want to claim. Uh, thirdly, they also push some infrastructure project. Uh, in this case, previously a military post uh, after the 1962 border clashes uh, in that area, uh, south of the McMahon line, there have been some uh, outposts that have been constructed. And then they would gradually build up other major infrastructure projects like we are seeing in the Pankungso Lake sector or in other areas. So there is a certain pattern to the Chinese move in this direction. Uh, as we have inaccessible roads from our side, uh, it is difficult for us to keep a track on what is happening. So the effort is to connect to the LSE. In the case of the Chinese, they have constructed roads up to the line of actual control yeah. uh, and been able to uh, regularly patrol those areas by easier means by traveling on jeeps and four by four vehicles. In the case of India, it is difficult for us to reach up to the LSE from the nearest outpost. And so it takes generally two to three weeks for these patrols to go up to that area. In between, of course, the Chinese have been pushing the borders uh, and have been gobbling up the territories. You mentioned about the salami slicing. Uh, they acquired these as we do not patrol those areas in the remote regions. So that is one. Secondly, they have recently announced the plan of populating some of those areas, like the 101 uh, households that they have constructed. In the 2005 agreement between India and China, the populated areas should not be disturbed. Yeah. Uh, uh, principle has been mentioned. So taking that, they are now populating these areas so that they will put up this claim later on that there is population in these areas and hence the LSE in their perception cannot be disturbed. So that is another way. There are some six areas in Arunachal Pradesh and about 23 areas across the line of actual control in which many of these constructions are coming up. So we have to be alert uh, uh, since the June 15th incident in Ladakh when 20 Indian soldiers were killed. We should see this as a regular pattern and take uh, precautionary measures all right. in yeah. terms of connecting to the line of actual control. So, so in all the 23 areas, it is likely to have some construction activity and specifically in those six areas. Absolutely. In the fish no, tails in no. Arunachal Pradesh, eastern portion uh, and in the upper Subansuri district, and other areas we will so, we should see so, the trouble coming up right dr kundapalli from what i we we have gathered from what both of you uh, mr ranade and yourself what you have said is that it's a calculated strategy it's a planned manner in which the chinese are approaching let me turn to you mr tapir gao mr tapir gao bjp mp veteran political leader from arunachal pradesh joining me live from pasighat tonight uh, mr tapir gao there has been a massive protest today in Upper Suban City District in the town of Zaporijo. Zaporijo, there was a massive protest today. We, we can have those visuals of the protests where the local local people in Zaporijo, the Urnachalis, they have also burnt effigies of the Chinese leader Xi Jinping. Uh, now, that means, uh, Mr. Tapir Gao, public sentiment, people are absolutely angry, isn't it? Yeah, rightly. You have uh, pointed out, and uh, all my respected uh, panel members in your news live, 
really I am concerned and we all must have put heads together on this issue for the national cost. Whatever former uh, panelists, expert in Chinese uh, strategies, they have rightly pointed out. Now see, in the Wallong region, the entire Luhit Valley beyond Kibito, Wallong and Kibito, all this sort of construction of houses, all strategic points have been completed. And in the Siang Bormoputro Valley beyond Geling, all both left and right bank of the strategic area locations, all we have seen their houses, the trace house were converted into RCC with along CJC. Now it's in Subon City that they have constructed recently, though they have occupied this area, not exactly in 15, 1959, the first fighting between China and India in Longju on the Mekmon line, a place called Longju, yeah. first firing incident take place. Then Nehru went to China and he called for Sini Hindi bye-bye. After that, Assam rifle were engaged there at Longju, but uh, they were overrun and martyred uh, in 1962. After 62, all these activities has taken place and whatever Sarai, it's called in China no. or Tibet, no, no. Traishu, but in local name is Lenchi River. Along the Lenchi River, Longchu, Longju was captured in 1962. Then second base came was Bisa and Maja. From Longju to Maja, two lane road has been constructed there. One mini Heidel and or paramilitary there army uh, headquarter has been established there. It right, is right, in right. Google. Uh, we will, now, we will, we will. The issue is, now, now, now the issue now, is, was we. Tapi Gauji, uh, that, the that. The issue is, yeah. The, I'll, I'll just a second. The issue is, whatever it may be, but the constructions in 2019 and 20, whatever they have constructed, this is in between Longju and Bisa, is within the Indian territory. So we must raise and we must have a common issues how to engage China internationally or bilaterally. We have to engage them and make them understand that they are constructing this village inside Indian trade. Okay, that is a very important statement. That is a very important space statement coming from the Arunachal BJP MP, Mr. Tapir Gao. Uh, he has very clearly said that there is public protest because this villages has come, this particular village has come up well inside Indian territory in the district of Upper Subansri in Arunachal Pradesh. And therefore, Mr. Tapri Gao had advocated that India need to engage with China and tell it clearly that this business which they are doing, a uh, building infrastructure is well inside Indian territory. Uh, I don't know whether Mr. Jarpum Gamling is with me. Uh, uh, let me go once again to you, Mr. Jaidev Ranade. Now the big question is, uh, what are the options before India? Because uh, the pictures have clearly shown that these houses have already come up. This was already a military base. This could be a border defense village. And they are saying that this is part of their poverty relief project. Farmers and herdsmen have been uh, already being settled in those, uh, th in those houses. Now the question is, wh what should be India's response now? As I said, this is part of a larger project. Certainly, they're calling it a poverty alleviation project and putting funds uh, uh, under that head for this uh, project. But there are 684 villages that are planned right across the Indo-Tibet border. So what has happened here is likely to happen in other places also. Uh, we've already noticed that there is one village which is in a sort of a gray area between China or Tibet and uh, Bhutan. And they have started constructing there also. So uh, we, we will have to be alert that this doesn't happen in other places which are thinly populated or not properly monitored. That is the first point. The second, I think uh, what Mr. Tapirgao said, 
is that we uh, is correct we will have to engage with the chinese and tell them that this is actually violation of all protocols uh, by uh, coming into our territory and then putting up villages there um the other point is of course they will claim that the entire arunachal pradesh is there so there is a problem there but we will have to engage with them and ask them to put a stop to this activity as otherwise we will find them mushrooming in another place that okay. uh, let okay. me also say yeah. that we have to think out of the box and start uh, uh, figuring out how we are going to repopulate our border belt how we are going to bring people into the border belt rather than people leaving in search of better jobs and better absolutely. employment absolutely absolutely so how do we bring them back and what are the um, uh, plans that we can have i'm sure you'll discuss this before the end of your show right uh, we will definitely discuss that uh, i am also joined on the phone line by 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 jarpum gamlin and pipilida and i'm also joined on the phone line by apsu general secretary uh uh tabom dai is also on the phone line with me but let me go to you dr srikant kondapalli dr srikant kondapalli a specific question what ideally should be india's response now that we have visual proof of china building a full fledged village and not only that chinese citizens are now coming up with videos of this particular village although it's a representational video uh giving an idea that what the village looks like and saying that this is a great work by the chinese so on and so forth what should be india's response now dr kondapalli in 1986 87 during the samdurongchu incident general sundar ji organized the airland battle concept and he had the operation checkerboard conducted and in this the kill ratio was 1 is to 10 that is for every one indian soldier killed there are 10 chinese soldiers killed of course 2021 is not similar yet i think we should mobilize the forces um across the line of actual control uh, full mobilization uh, and we should indicate to the chinese that the costs are going to be higher if they encroach on the indian territories So are you suggesting that uh, Dr Kondapalli that India needs to talk tough some tough talking is the urgent need of the hour before things go Absolutely. out of hand Absolutely So this tough talking we should limit it to talking or do you think there should be some demonstration in the sense that what about uh, troop build up along the border what about uh, uh, demand demand yes Tapir Gao ji you want to say something I'm coming back to you Dr Kondapalli yeah. Tapir Gao ji yes uh, just i want to add one point with uh, uh, respected uh, panelist kandapalli ji we need to have a top talks along with we need to have a strategy along the border right from galwan to walong in the tri junction of eastern sector all the border area development policy for in heavy poor living standard of the border peoples road communications and airport telecommunications all policies must be along with the top talks absolutely i think uh, dr kondapalli you cannot agree more all of us cannot agree more with what the mp is saying mr tapir gao saying that infrastructure on the indian side needs to be boosted up like never before right from galwan to walong kondapalli absolutely i think the 44 strategic roads that were commissioned in october uh, i think we need to increase the pace in fact there are uh, several measures that are been undertaken in terms of the infrastructure projects uh, we need to have a comprehensive border management uh, policies and this is the right time to uh, take into consideration all those suggestions absolutely let me go to mr jarpom gamlin uh mr jarpom gamlin a uh, well known commentator and of course a leader of the national people's party in arunachal pradesh jarpom gamlin uh welcome uh issue is how do you look at the you know china building the village there is already a lot of protest on the streets uh coming up in arunachal pradesh upper subansari today in dapori jo there was a huge protest 
by the local people and the civil society, burning effigies of the Chinese leader Xi Jinping. So do you think that is going to spread the anti-China sentiments, which is already gripping after this incident? Do you think it is going to be go viral now? Jarpum. I think it's uh, more than the anti-China sentiment. I think, you know, sentiment is against the policy uh, of the North Bloc and the South Bloc in Delhi for the last 70, 75 years. Because, you know, in terms of border area development, you know, government of India needs to relook its policy of border area development program also, the funding pattern, and the functioning of even the border road organization in the frontier state of Arunachal need to be relooked. Re the pace of growth in the border area undertaken, and the projects undertaken by BRO is not up to the mark, which everyone knows. Despite that, BRO has been pushing and uh, infrastructure development has taken a back seat. I think that's one part of it in terms of uh, fund allocation also for the uh, border area development program, government of India needs to review. Re so therefore, to blame it on China for everything, because China will do what it takes to do. But Indian government also needs to take a stand and, you know, take its position and make it clear that, you know, border area development program is a serious program. So government of India needs to do anything to it. So therefore, if at all sentiment is there in the... Uh, amongst the Arunachali people, then sentiment against the policy got sued by the North Block and the South Block in Delhi. Okay, uh, Mr. Tapir Gao, I'm coming to you, Mr. Ranade, in, in a few seconds. Uh, Mr. Tapir Gao, uh, you know, uh, two days ago, you had told me in a chat, in a conversation which we had aired, which we had broadcast, you said that, uh, you know, since 1959, this particular area has been under occupation and you had blamed the Congress party government for not doing anything. But that's fine. But people would like to know what should be done right now on priority basis. As Jarpum Gamlin said, North Block and South Block should be responsible because they have not done anything in the last 70 years. Uh, up to some extent, Jarpum Gamlin has rightly pointed out, but at the moment, when Modi came to power, all the border roads has been sanctioned and two lanes are coming up, up to the border. And all, most of the Congress abandoned uh, ALGs, advanced landing ground has been restored and it is operative. Now, uh, the main issue is the immediate need of the hours is we must have a comprehensive policy, whether it is South Bullock, North Bullock, they must plan a policy. Whatever the Chinese are doing, we should also equally raise our strategy along the border. So, yes. From so, Galwan to Walong. Galwan to Walong, that is what you have been... Uh, uh, right. Was it, was we, today, we are hearing about Ornasal Pradesh. Till yesterday, we hear about Bhutan and Galwan and uh, Demsok. Next time you will hear in Uttarakhand and uh, uh, Himachal Pradesh, the same issues are coming because the China have the strategy to build villages, infrastructures along the border. Then why can't we do it? We must have a comprehensive policy immediately to fill up the gaps along the uh, borders. All right, uh, I'll have to go for a break. But before that, Mr. Ranade, uh, do you think what, from what I gather, a tit for tat policy, but can we, uh, as a democracy, just walk into China and start building a Chinese territory and start building a border village? Uh, is that a strategy? Uh, or, or should we gear up on our side, which we've not been able to do in the last 70 years, uh, most part of which were under the rule of the Congress party? Well, I just want to make, wanted to make a quick comment. The first is that let us uh, be clear-eyed that this particular construction has started and been completed at a time when both our armies are on alert along the entire border. The Chinese army has been mobilized and so have we. So if we are planning uh, something uh, assertive, we have to keep that factor in mind, that there is readiness on both sides. Secondly, uh, I don't think that being a democracy is a handicap. 
for our going into Chinese territory. But the point is, which territory are we going to go into and what kind and what, are we, what do we hope to gain from it? So I think today we have to start thinking differently. Certainly we must take this particular issue up, but we will have to heighten our, village, uh, our vigil. And in addition to just troop deployments, we will have to start uh, looking at drones, etc., for carrying out surveillance. Finally, let me just say, that we certainly need to speed up the development of border uh, uh, areas and border roads. And for this, we will have to start. And I think the government has now started uh, also co-opting private players. So we will have to go about it in uh, this manner. Absolutely. But it will have to be a wholesome development, not just a road. We will have to start trying to think of getting people back or asking them to stay on there. Absolutely. Them as, as Mr. Tapigao is saying, comprehensive policy, that is what uh, Mr. Jaydev Ranade is also saying in so many words. Uh, when I come back, I'll go for a break. When I come back, I will go to Mr. Tabom Dai in Pasigad, the uh, student leader belonging General Secretary of the All Natural Pradesh Students Union. I'll also go back to Jarpum Gamling and Dr. Kondapalli and everybody else on the, on the show. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Welcome back, uh, Jarpum Gamlin. Jarpum Gamlin, uh, if, okay, uh, Mr. 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 Tapir Gao, Mr. Tapir Gao, now the question is, the big question now is, do you think that a time has come where the political leaders from Arunachal Pradesh cutting across party lines, as well as leaders of the community, uh, should, you know, make a, make a passionate call uh, for re-election on the ground, do you think uh, that is you are that is what you are going to do now? Because you belong to the BJP, you have a lot of uh, 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 you know the ground situation well. Are you going to tell your party leaders to take some concrete action on the ground now? You are addressed to me. Yes. So I can't hear some of the voice because I got disconnected. Okay. Anyway, this. Anyway, I got the point. This matter has been fully aware of the uh, present situations by our central leaders and our BJP organizations uh, from top to bottom. And even in our state level also, they have fully aware of the situations. Now, there are many things that we can have, we can highlight some of the issues that need to be done on the ground, on the televisions, but our government in the state and the center is fully aware of it and uh, something will really happen and necessary actions on the ground is expected uh, very soon. All right, that's a good assurance there from uh, Mr. Tapirigao, the BJP MP, Dr. Srikant Kondapalli. Uh, you know, now, now we have seen, as is, as is the case, uh, there has been already some kind of a politicization of the issue uh, because most of the time in this country, as we all know, it is the Congress party that has been in power and this stretch of land that we are talking about has been under Chinese occupation since 1959. And obviously, then and now, the most parts, the Congress was uh, the party that was ruling the country. But do you think that is going to help us in any way? Do you think uh, these, these issues uh, are not important at this point of time? How do you look at it? Uh, you know, what should we do? Do you think uh, that is going to do more harm to us than good at this juncture? Um, uh, keeping apart the party differences uh, within India, I think we should look at from a national interest perspective because of the importance of the territory 
the territorial dispute uh, and so on. Number one, I think we should move beyond the party lines and emphasize on the national interests uh, in this uh, testing time. Uh, number one. Number two, uh, I think the uh, the Chinese approach of nibbling away territories uh, in the line of actual control areas is going to continue for some time. Uh, nevertheless, I think we should have a policy on the border management uh, system uh, and also increase the investments in these areas in terms of infrastructure, in terms of the security provision and others, other measures. This is necessary uh, and we need to move beyond the party lines uh, and focus on the national interests. Okay, I mean, as we are debating, uh, viewers are writing, uh, you know, on on writing on our social media site. Uh, one of the Orunachali citizens, uh, Orunachali, uh, has have written that you know, from de demanding a sanctioning of a road from Dampodijo to Geruka Muk should be immediately sanctioned, where so that army movement for logistics and weapons and so on improve. Uh, to a great extent. I think uh, that is something which is uh, unique. The people are really concerned about this issue, the building of a road. Uh, okay, we are also trying to get to uh, Tabom Dai, the leader. I, I don't know whether, why we we are unable to connect him on the phone line even. Uh, uh, okay, let, let, me, let me talk to Jarpum Gamlin. Uh, Jarpum, I'm coming, come in, I'll also go to Mr. Jaydev Ranade once again. Uh, Jarpum, uh, now, do you think, uh, you know, uh, the state government also has a limited role so far as highlighting the issue. Mr. Tapigao is saying, of course, that the, both the center and the state government are already on the job uh, uh, and uh, people have not much reason to worry because uh, uh, some kind of a concrete action uh, we are going to see soon. Uh, as someone who keeps close track of major developments in Arunachal Pradesh along the border, what do you have to say? More than anybody else, my senior, the Tapirgaoji has to work about the way we have been functioning. Because he has been raising the issue since November 2019 and November 2020 he has been raising. And every time he has raised the issue in the floor of the House of Parliament, the army has come out and defended state that you know, there is no, uh, no truth to the claim made by Tapirgaoji. So therefore, as an MP of the ruling establishment, he needs to ensure that army, Indian army is on the same page as, as he is, and the people of Arunachal are in. So therefore, when we talk of national interest, I think army should also not deny or should not, should, should not deny. Okay, we are, we are having a very poor audio. Uh, we, we are having a very poor audio with Mr. Jarpum Gamlin. We will go back to, we will go back to Mr. Jaidev Ranade in New Delhi. Uh, we'll, we'll go back to Mr. Jaidev Ranade in New Delhi uh, uh, and uh, the other panelists. We are having some, some line problems. Yes, uh, yeah, Mr. Mr. Ranade, uh, you know, the, you have seen a, 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 an NPP leader who is a very well-known commentator. Uh, let me take this question to Mr. Kondapalli. Uh, there are talk, we, are, we are also saying that on our side we are building defense, we are building infrastructure like roads and all. Uh, now, is it time for now to engage private players, people who have the expertise, rather than concentrating only on the BRO to build the roads, which is taking such a long time, Dr. Kondapalli? Because this has now become, uh, a, 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 become an, a matter of very, very urgent necessity to have our own infra along the road, along the border. I, uh, in fact, the... Uh uh, not just the private, but also the state uh, control uh, road construction corporations uh, or railway construction projects. Uh, there is also the experiment on the public-private partnership, PPP model. Um, uh, I think this is not the time for us to go into the uh, who builds these, but wh what is important is we want the roads and railways right now. Uh, not yeah. about the uh, the the organizations involved, but uh, the uh, urgency. Uh, remember, the uh, Japanese also have been pitching in uh, for the infrastructure projects. Uh, the Chinese actually learned from the Japanese in the road construction projects and railway construction projects. Uh, so there is nothing that we could uh, uh, 
uh, belittle the international cooperation in this regard. So uh, most important is to have the projects running uh, rather than looking at the private or public or, uh, or both. Okay. Okay, let me go to Mr. Rana Day. Uh, oh, I can't understand what's going on. Uh, Mr. Mr. Rana Day's line is also cut at this point in time. Let me go to Tapir Gao. Uh, Mr. Mr. Tapir, okay. No, no, that is the point you are making, Dr. Srikant Kandapalli. But the point is, you know, uh, we have sanctioned, during the last government, we have sanctioned during Manmohan Singh's time, the border road. Today, we have the second uh, innings of uh, our, uh, our Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Narendra Modi. But the point is, what is the problem? Why do we take, is it the terrain that is responsible to a great extent? Or is it the technology? What is your understanding? Uh, it is true that there is the uh, terrain, technology, funding, bureaucratic procedures, environmental protection related aspects, uh, or other uh, corruption or other factors. Uh, but I think we, we can fix these uh, and move forward in terms of uh, having the national priorities. And I think in the last two, three years, we have done substantially. The pace has, of course, has to be increased because of the looming danger that we have on the borders. Uh, this is the wake up call. And I think we need to mobilize at a national level. Uh, so there are problems, but we can overcome these problems. Okay, uh, so Mr. Mr. Tapir Gao, uh, you know the issue. The the issue is now, what about optics? The Chinese they have built a village, and they are trying to you know mobilize public opinion, saying that we have done a great thing. It's a poverty elevation uh, project, and so on. Uh, uh, so, what do you think? Very shortly, I'm going to Mr. Ranade in a, in a, in 20 seconds. But Mr. Tapiga, how do you respond? See, this is the strategy of the Communist Party, China, that they construct all infrastructures along the borders that shows that they are the first occupant of that territory. This is the only mission that they are extending in all the uh, disputed areas and uh, uh, border dispute areas. They have got all infrastructures building up uh, all over bordering China in other, from Mongolia, from Myanmar, in other sectors also. Now, it is our right time. The earlier panel panelist has rightly pointed out most of the point I could not hear, I got disconnected anyway. So we need to do, it is not too late we start a good beginning. And this is the right time we need to do something on the ground. We could blend to what China is doing along the border. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Jaidev Ranade, now you have predicted in 2019 that this is going to happen, this has happened. Now the Chinese are trying to take advantage of this. Uh, they, they have a, they, they are trying to, do you think uh, this is a new strategy on the part of the Chinese to open France at several border stretches along the country, right from Galwan to Walong? And uh, they are going to have pinpricks in, in the Bhutan-China border as well, so that India will have to have uh, deal with that as well. Do you think uh, this is part of the China's strategy in 2021 to put enough pressure because they have not been able to succeed much after that foray in Ladakh? a year where they will try and put us under a lot of pressure, sustained pressure, uh, and all along the border. As I said, the Chinese have mobilized the PLA, the People's Liberation Army, right along the border. Well, so have we. But the fact is that it makes for a tense situation, and no, it also no. opens the possibility for them to create new pressure points or new flash points anywhere of their choosing. So that is there. But if I may just make one point with regard to uh, building of roads, etc., I think we need to expand the manner in which we look at it. It's not just roads. Roads have got bogged down because of a combination of factors, unnecessary bureaucracy, um, uh, incompetence and corruption, all three. But we need to therefore broaden the, th uh, broaden the uh, scope 
by inviting pi private players, just giving them contracts, many of them will be willing to come, provided we give them uh, assured stretches of road and not just half a kilometer or one kilometer. We'll have to give them long stretches. That is one. The second, we have to look at it in terms of con uh, connectivity and therefore go on to build, um, uh, you know, light air air aircraft landing grounds, etc., aircraft landing grounds or smaller airports across the uh, northeast so that communications are much faster, civil and military, and also build up uh, mobile communications, which we lack. So uh, these are the things that can be done. In fact, the airports and the mobile communications can be done quicker and uh, easier. So I think we will have to move in a comprehensive manner uh, to right. address the problem of connectivity first. Okay, right. Uh, let me go now. I'm joined on the phone line live from Pasighat by all Arunachal Pradesh Students Union General Secretary, Mr. Tabom Dai. Mr. Tabom Dai, what is your response? How do you look at China constructing a village in Upper Subhan City District? Uh, uh, good evening. And uh, because of the, we are speaking, we are debating on the Chinese uh, Chinese issue, but uh, you see the network problem here. So, what I must say is that uh, you see there has been a protest, and there have been many protests, and these are not new things. The Chinese claiming our state. Our uh, part of Onachal today, sometimes they claim Tawang, sometimes uh, there are so many antics they are doing. And this time again, we are seeing that there's an emerging news that, that uh, relationship is protected uh, inside the disputed LAC. So we are antagonized, we are very much perturbed. But uh, our response is that, uh, I'm supplementing, uh, uh, agreeing with the statement that uh, our elder brother, Jarpum Gamlim, has said earlier that uh, the policy. The approach of the central government vis a vis China has to be emboldened. But I must say that. Uh, you see, how about that approach and a lethargic approach regarding uh, whenever it comes, whenever the issues of China come up by the central government, uh, it's really uh, this one, uh, disgusting. So now, everyone of the, everyone of the panelists have said that apart from strengthening strengthening the military force, development has to be given a very big push in this border frontier state. That's our stand. Dr. Kandapalli, you have heard uh, a very, very prominent student leader from Arunachal Pradesh, Tabam Dai, saying that, you know, development push has to be in increased like never before. There lies the catch. Now, my question to you, Dr. Kandapalli, do you think India suite further squeeze uh, China, as far as its business interests are concerned, okay, there was a time when we decided not to, we have, we have, we have uh, you know, banned some of the Chinese apps, we have uh, decided not to use Chinese mobile handsets. Do you think that is enough? Or do you think we have to intensify our economic pressure on the Chinese? Uh, it is true that there has been some restrictions on investments from China in the infrastructure projects. There is the 212 apps have been banned. Then there is the Confucius Institutes have been shut down. There is also the pressure on the people-to-people -people contacts and uh, various others, partly because of the COVID-19 disruptions, but also broadly because of the bilateral relations status. Uh, because the Chinese have reneged on the agreements we signed with them, it would be difficult for India to believe uh, the, in the next round of discussions, etc., both at the special representative or at the other 30-odd uh, uh, engagement processes that we have with China at various levels, various ministries, and so on. So uh, the cost for China is also, of course, rising because we are about 400 million uh, consumers in the country and China is losing much. For example, the TikTok ban and other few uh, have already resulted in something like six to seven billion dollars of loss for China. Uh, and, you know, so this is the, uh, the retaliation that India could think of right now. Uh, but uh, also depending on the global situation, the, uh, the 
the Indo-Pacific, the Quad, and others, we have to also synchronize our activity with the other countries. Um, we, of course, have uh, various agreements, free trade agreements with the ASEAN, Japan, uh, South Korea in terms of SEPA agreements. So we are not losing much in those uh, aspects, but we need to intensify further by linking up the same infrastructure that we are building up to link up with the ASEAN region uh, and have the connectivity as part of the activist policy. So I think not just for the current contingency, but we need to think. Right, right. I think uh, that's what uh, Srikant Kondapalli, uh, okay, we have lost the line to him, uh, but basically what Dr. Srikant Kondapalli is saying basically is that we India has to raise this issue at multilateral forums. Uh, I'm running short of time, but I'll take the last comments from all my esteemed panelists. Uh, Tabom Dai, what should be what should be the response of the civil society now? Tabom Dai, what should be the response of the civil society now? Uh, you see, what's the, uh, the civil society, uh, particularly in Arunachal Pradesh, uh, we all are staunch nationalists. We are patriotic people, and uh, whenever the issues of China has come up, we have been always been uh, uh, telling the state government and the central government that uh, they have to give a concrete reply. You see, even the issue of special visa, even the river imbroglio, Siang river imbroglio, imbroglio, they all remain unresolved. Right. But we are, we are, we are staunch nationalists. We are very integral part of India. That's, uh, that's our part, and we are, we are uh, at every given point of time, we are ready to defend our this one. But, Absolutely. Uh, but the, Absolutely. the union government has to be, has to be, has to be strong. Absolutely. No doubt about that. Uh, Mr. Tapirigao, final comments. Mr. Tapirigao, final my, comments. Final, my, uh, we need uh, not only Orunachal, from Balwan to Walong, all the borders with border states must have the strategic infrastructure developments along the border. That should be the first priority and it should must it must come up very soon with a comprehensive policy by the government of India to develop the border, uh, border areas along the borders. Absolutely. Very well said there, Tapirigao. Last word to you, uh, Mr. Jaidev Ranade. Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Kondapalli, Dr. Kondapalli has said that India has to raise these issues much more uh, in a much more vigorous manner in mul several multilateral forums uh, and perhaps uh, to keep up the pressure. And what, how do you look at it? Do you think we need to intensify pressure on the business front much more than what we are doing as of now? Absolutely. In fact, we need to look at China in a realistic manner as what it is. It is for us a threat or a challenge, depending on what word you prefer to use, on the economic, military and diplomatic fronts. So let's not get away from it. We have to call a spade a spade. We have to raise economic pressure on China. The first thing is to deny it. Uh, the Indian market, which is the largest market in the world today, uh, which has which is untapped. Um, the second is we must put diplomatic pressure on China by raising these issues, raising its uh, violation of international norms at international fora and at all bilateral fora. And thirdly, I think we have to inform the public, get public pressure uh, on China also. And if you recall, uh, uh, boycotting of China's Chinese goods is one thing that was mentioned, I think, on your channel some time ago. Things like this are, um, you know, uh, measures that the population itself can take. Okay. Uh, uh, f actually, this is this is what is emerging from this debate. Uh, basically, all the panelists have concurred on one thing that India has to intensify economic pressure on China. Military as well as diplomatic pressure also has to be mounted. At the end of the day, we cannot take the Chinese uh, for granted. Uh, they are engaged in a calculated strategy. Uh, these are not just pinpricks. This is much more than pinpricks. And of course, for, as Mr. Tapirigao has said, from Galwan to Walong, from north to the east, 
uh, you know, in, that needs a comprehensive strategy. And Dr. Srikant Kandapalli said private players, people who have the expertise in building roads needs to come up. We have to boost our infrastructure. And as Tabom Dai, the student leader, says that Arunachalis are extremely patriotic people. They have raised uh, their voices on any issue relating to uh, India-China affairs, particularly the misadventures on the part of China. They have been raising their issues. And Jarpum Gamlin, of course, the NPP leader from Itanagar, uh, whom we could not talk much because of the connectivity issues, of course, saying that North and South Block, as well as the North Block, has to focus its attention in a much more vigorous manner as far as the Arunachal frontier is concerned. This has been an engaging discussion. This is the, not the last word on the subject. We have to keep a very, very close watch. And of course, we have confidence in our, not just in our military, but in our government and the opposition and the political class as a whole to stand united in these kind of situations. And of course, we will continue with this debate on Northeast life because we are located in a stretch that has a very long border and porous border with China. I thank all my panelists for participating in this engaging discussion and the viewers for watching the show. Good night and goodbye. Thank you.